Yesterday, I had a friend over, and he is somebody who runs a large company, is a father, and I would say is a thoroughly sensible Susan. And one of the first things he said in conversation was, have you seen the photo? Did you see that Louis had his fingers crossed? What do you think that means? The madness has gone everywhere, hasn't it? It has. I think we all know somebody like that, don't we? Somebody who seemingly very sensible, perhaps well-educated, who has got in touch over the weekend to say what is going on with that photograph, particularly if you're a journalist. I think every journalist in Fleet Street has been asked, what's the real story behind that photograph? What's really going on here with Kate? Where is Kate? What's going on? How did a princess on medical leave spiral into a conspiracy theory whirlwind, encouraged by a photoshopped Mother's Day snap. The interesting ones, I think, come from the foreign press. So in the German tabloid magazines, there was Kate's Pregnant with Twins, okay. um, and a very specific report about how she'd been the victim of a domestic violence attack on December the 28th, which also was with um, kind of horrifying details. Spanish television told us that she'd been in a coma, and, <laughs> and still was. Yeah, I'm laughing because it's so absurd. Yeah. But actually, there's, you know, there are people out there who believe all this stuff. And mm. why? Because Kensington Palace has been quite silent throughout this whole period. You're listening to Stories of Our Times, from The Times and The Sunday Times. I'm Luke Jones. Today, a photo gone wrong. Where is the Princess of Wales? I'm Kate Mancy. I am assistant editor at The Times and their royal editor in charge of royal coverage. Let's get to the scandal du jour. This all started, I guess, when it was announced that that the Princess of Wales was in hospital, was having something and was going to have a a period of of recuperation. That was all quite straightforward, easy peasy then, wasn't it? She's going to be away for a bit. Expect news soon. That's right. Well, we were told initially that she had had the operation the previous day Hmm. when the news came out that it was all done and dusted. I think they'd wanted to make sure that that had gone well. Then they released to the the public that that Kate had had planned abdominal surgery in the London clinic. Breaking news from the United Kingdom this morning. Some big news today involving the British royal family. A surprise statement that came from Kensington Palace around two o'clock this afternoon. Completely out of the blue, there'd been no hint at all that the Princess of Wales had been in any way unwell. Uh, The statement reads that she was admitted to the London Clinic here in central London yesterday for planned abdominal surgery. Um, The surgery was successful, but she's expected to remain in hospital for 10 to 14 days. Within about 90 minutes of that press release, there was some more news from Buckingham Palace, so the King's office, saying that he too was due to be in hospital the following week and he was having a procedure to treat an enlarged prostate. Now, obviously, we now subsequently know that that transpired, that they'd found a separate cause for concern while he was being treated. And we now know the King has cancer, although we don't know what type of cancer. However... With Kate, we've never found out what that abdominal surgery was about. That It was very clear from Kensington Palace they wanted to keep that private. At what point then did you start to sense some of the craziness online, I guess, that went above and beyond usual curiosity as to what it might be and actually the sort of where's Kate movement began? When did you become aware of that? Oh, that's a good question. I think pretty soon afterwards there were questions about what has happened to Kate and that sparked this huge kind of online speculation as to what could possibly be the matter with her. This is the last time Kate was seen in public, Christmas Day, looking perfectly healthy as she attended church with her family. She's known to be fit and athletic. In fact, the only time we've seen the 42-year-old in the hospital was when she gave birth to her children. And we had sort of thought that while we'd seen the king walking out and waving to his well-wishers as he left the hospital, there was some question as to whether we might see Kate. Now, we were told she was going to be in for 10 to 14 days in the hospital, which, and that she would require months of recovery afterwards. So we're talking serious surgery here. 
And when she left, we were told afterwards that she had left and she'd gone home to Windsor. So a very kind of secret private exit, nothing like we had before when she's been into hospital. So previously when she was pregnant, she had this awful um, morning sickness, the you know this awful type that required her to be hospitalised for a bit. And when she came out, she accepted flowers from the public. And so there were lots of questions then about where is Kate? We were told that she was at home recovering. There was no picture in the coming days and there weren't even any words to say thank you to the well-wishers, which I thought was interesting because I thought having had so much good feeling towards obviously around the world that there might have been a public message, but none was forthcoming. Hmm. And we had lots of gossip online and the palace, I think, as you'd expect, would never comment on that or were they sort of off the record I don't know no it was something that right from the start they were never going to kind of get involved with is this true is that true they had this set line which was private matter and that that was going to be it and that was we we would be unlikely to see her on public duties until Easter and they weren't going to deviate from that. They weren't going to get involved with, is this true? Is that true? And and a lot of this, they didn't want to dignify with a response because, frankly, some of it was absurd. Well, some of it was uh, she's gone to Brazil to have a, a bum lift. There was, uh, as you mentioned, uh, some of the wild rumours were of a secret baby, of a facelift. I mean, oddly trivial, quite niche <laughs> conspiracies. That's right. And I think the royal family, in my experience of covering them for 15 years, is that there is a certain kind of follower that kind of loves to revel in the there's this secret element to the royal family that there must be something that we're not being told and this must be it and the conspiracy theories online and all these kind of armchair mm. warriors uh, unnamed often on social media who expound these theories to their squillions of followers or but three. most of it is <laughs> well yes uh, most of it so you'd be surprised actually how <laughs> popular some of these people are online by the numbers at least but yes i think it's always been an area that's attracted, you know, intrigue, speculation, conspiracy theories, but more so when obviously they can't see the Princess of Wales. They don't know what she's doing. They have mm. to take the palace's word for it. And perhaps if they don't trust what the palace is saying, this grows. And have we seen that kind of interest in Kate before? Because it makes sense about, well, especially around the Queen when she was unwell, the late Queen, and also about around Harry and Meghan. There's lots of online conspiracy and, and, and chatter, but... Is Kate a particular source of fascination for, for these people in the past? Yes, I think she is. I think she's hugely popular. Just any picture of her goes around the world. And, you know, like I say, you have people online who all they do will kind of write about what she's wearing or what engagement she's doing. And these are hugely popular social media accounts. And almost anything that's said about her is is pounced upon, is dissected, is, you mm. know, analysed because they you know there are huge fans out there it's she is a member of the royal family a see, she's a future queen but also in in general sense people see her as this amazing celebrity mm. and we don't know that much about her it's not, it's not like she has a personal instagram account like a lot of you know singers or actors might do so that adds to the intrigue i think as well we did get a photo in the end this paparazzi photo Explain the situation around that and, and why many people here might not have seen that when that came out. So there was a photograph that was taken by a paparazzi, as you say. It showed Kate being driven in a car by her mother, Carol. Perhaps if you live in the UK, you might not have seen it. We well, certainly won't have seen it in a British publication like The Times because there is an understanding that as responsible journalists... We accept that that there's a privacy element to her recovery time. Mm. Uh, this was a, an unauthorised picture. It's not always clear the circumstances in which these pictures are taken. And they may claim that it's from a public road and that anybody who was passing by would have seen such a sight. However, I think in this day and age, we have to be very careful about anybody's private health concerns. And particularly when they've said, I want to be left alone and, and, mm. and to be a private individual. That said... There's a massive market for that picture online. So we saw it on online websites. And then, of course, then it circulates. So if anybody's got a social media account in this country they, and they're interested in that sort of thing, they mm. probably have seen that image, but they won't have seen it in a, a kind of official on the Times website. So. And the photograph showed a, a large car with, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Carol Middleton driving and then a person sitting next to her. And it's quite a long lens, slightly grainy photo. I think the person in the passenger seat was wearing sunglasses. And there was some discussion of whether was that Kate? Was that her sister, Pippa? And if it is Kate, how well or otherwise does she look? That's right. So... Again, that one kind of quite grainy image, like you say, that looked like it had been taken from a long way away and from a quite quite a low vantage point down near the road, shooting up. People were saying, is that Kate at all? Is it Pippa? Maybe it's the palace have put this picture out, pretending it's a paparazzi shot. And actually it's Pippa... And for some reason, she's she's changed her face shape to look like her sister. And lots of people see shadows where there are none with, mm. with this with this beat. But but there are all the ingredients there for encouraging shadows in the photo not being used by the British press for the reasonable reasons that you laid out, and then also the fact that it's not quite a clear photograph and you can't quite be sure what you're looking at. I mean, that just fuel to the fire, isn't it? Well, I mean, look, the palace. I have sympathy with them because there's nothing they can do about paparazzi's hiding in bushes. They can put out as many kind of messages to prevent that as possible and they can seek to prosecute people where they see fit or if they've broken the law in some way. Mm. That's tricky. I mean, she did just look to me like the Princess of Wales sitting next to her mother in a car, frankly. Mm. But again, that the fascination with that one grainy image tells you what was bubbling under the surface for weeks before that, which was that where is Kate? People by that stage are saying, is she even in Windsor? You know, where is she? Has she split split up with Prince William? And the chatter was becoming deafening. And there must have been those within Kensington Palace who thought, it's actually maybe it's not such a bad thing for this Im- image to be put up. I don't know. Mm. Um, certainly, we weren't going to use it. But that tells you that kind of level of heightened sense yeah. of kind of paranoia and intrigue and interest in somebody and it, it gets to be a quite a wild place online. In the wake of that we then have this Mother's Day photograph which the Princess of Wales posts on Instagram. I've got it here. Talk us through it. What do we see? So here we have a picture of the Princess of Wales sitting on a wicker chair on a kind of a, a short kind of patio outside what appears to be her, her home in Windsor in the estate there. You've got Prince George smiling. It looks like he's having a real laugh at something standing behind her and his two arms are leaning in front of mum to kind of wrap her in a nice hug. On her left side, so the right side from where we're looking at the picture, we've got Princess Charlotte who seems to be balancing on one of the the arms of the chair. She's got mum's hand wrapped around her, it seems. And on Kate's right, our left, we've got Prince Louis, her youngest son, who's five. And he looks like he's having a jolly good laugh as well. And they all look very happy. The children are all laughing. And Kate's got a big beaming smile on her face and her legs sort of, her ankles crossed in front of her, wearing a sort of pair of informal looking sort of jeans, a pair of boots and... They all look like they're about to go for a nice, lovely walk in the countryside. Very wholesome image. By all accounts, a very pleasant image. Um, first of all, how was that received, the photo? In the initial, I mean, everyone sort of jumped out to say, doesn't she look well? They look happy. Well, I think the in- initial reaction when it dropped at 9am on the Prince and Princess of Wales' social accounts on Sunday was, this is a message of reassurance. Isn't it wonderful? It was accompanied by a little comment from Catherine thanking everybody for their support and uh, and well wishes while she's been away from public duties. And the first instinct was that, you know, this was a, a charming mm. image to have released on Mother's Day. And do you think that they put that out in part to show that she is here, she's on the mend, to kind of put to bed some of the conspiracy? I think so, because I think that by that stage, there was a feeling in Kensington Palace, and I know because I was speaking to people within the palace, that some of these reports online were inaccurate and really upsetting um, for somebody who was recovering from major surgery. So Mm. that was an indication for me that it wasn't just, oh, it's rubbish on the internet, we can avoid it. And no doubt this picture was planned to put some of that to bed. I mean, what's interesting about the timing of it was right up until the end of Friday, I was being told, curiously, that 
there was still an element in the princess's mind of how would she look back on this moment in time in 10 years time. She's got this job that she's never going to retire from. It's a lifelong commitment to duty. Taking a few months out is actually not such a big deal. So, But would she look back on this in 10 years time and regret A, not putting a photograph out or would she regret B, putting a photograph out and not prioritising her recovery? Mm. And they were the two elements that were that were playing out I think in her mind and now I think as we know we won't need to wait 10 years to find out which one she'd regret because it's all been such a disaster <laughs> however I was surprised to see that on Sunday morning given that I knew there was a real tension whether they should cave to that pressure or whether they should keep the line and just say no we're private it's a private matter and we're having this kind of personal time so that Kate can recover away from the public eye. Mm. So to see something with the children, I thought it was fantastically reassuring was my first instinct. And I think Mm. lots of other people were too. But I was also quite surprised. It then quickly unraveled. What were some of the, the issues which people first started to notice in the photo? So people started to point out online several of the issues of the picture, some of which I think obviously we now No, and when you started to look at them, you think, oh, they've got a point there. Firstly, Charlotte's left hand, where the cuff, where her hand meets her, the cuff of her cardigan, Mm. you can see there's a disconnect. And you don't have to be a digital expert to zoom into that and see that there's sort of part of that cardigan arm is missing. It sort of fades away as well. It fades away and then it cuts in a strange angle. We have to to bear this in mind with weeks of mad conspiracy theories, mm. which are complete nonsense. Okay, yes. so we were all which, so I'm looking at these online with a real grain of salt. You know, thinking have of, I become one of these people? <laughs> no. And then you start looking because you, you know, as a journalist, you're curious and you think, no, that is quite strange. Then you've got the two hands of the princess. She's got one around Charlotte, one around Louis. One is blurry and one is in focus, which is unusual. Mm. Um, I'm not a photographer, I'm not a picture editor. However, we deal with pictures all the time and that struck me as slightly unusual. You've got an element there, again, going back to Princess Charlotte on her skirt where the line kind of cuts in again and it looks like something's been pasted on the top. And there's something actually which somebody pointed out to me today which I hadn't seen before, which was right at the back behind Louis, as apparently in a lot of these kind of Photoshop places, If you scroll down to where his legs are, um, there is a kind of disconnect with a white sort of step or ledge that goes underneath the the door at the back there. And it's always those bits, apparently, that you can kind of look to and kind of see because it doesn't connect. It sort of of wavers. There's a... It looks like two pictures spliced together. And um, joining unevenly. That's right. And, And not having been kind of blended in. So that, to me, was telling Kate... Obviously, looks fantastic when she always does. But then you've got this element at the top of her kind of zip up fleece. She's got as the zip just seems to disappear. It sort of starts and then it, it disappears, which looks strange. And if you look at the skin tone of the princess compared to the children, I mean, however, you know, she could be wearing makeup. I'm sure she is, and and the children won't be. But if you look at that, the light seems to be hitting the children in a different way from the princess, which makes the whole image look slightly odd. And as you say, some of that can be us reading a bit too much into it. But then there are parts of it, like Charlotte's sleeve, which is just clearly this photo has been altered. This led to more fevered conspiracy online. But what really put the nail in this was a few of the UK's leading news agency, news photo agencies, saying we're going to kill this photo. Why did that happen? And what does that mean? The picture came out at 9am. By about 20 past 8, we had several of the major news agencies. Now, these are picture agencies who distribute pictures around the world. Sometimes they're taken by their own photographers. Sometimes they're images that have come in that they're then helping to distribute to Mm. international media. But these are by no means small organisations, Associated Press, Agence France Press, Reuters. These are big names that we've all heard of, Getty Images. So on Sunday night... There were what's called kill notices that went out, which sounds awfully dramatic, doesn't it? But what that means is they were saying, we are not going to distribute this image. So a lot of these messages popped up at picture desks around Fleet Street. 
with a big kind of red cross through the picture saying notes to editors and librarians, please take these off your systems, off your databases. We can no longer be sure that this image hasn't been manipulated. And of all of those, I think PA pulling out is really important because Why? that's the, they have the right often to distribute official royal images. So for example, we took the still from the King's Commonwealth Day video um, mm. message from PA. PA distributed it. So they act in a way as a kind of an official distribution mm. arm for the palace. Obviously, in this instance, we know that it's been put out straight on social media, but that doesn't stop the other wires kind of distributing it to helping it to kind of get around the, the, the major news desks and picture desks. And what is their issue? If the photo has been taken of the of the family and then someone's gone, oh, hang on a second, this is a bit messy. Let's just sort of edit and quite clunkily, they've done a bit of touching up and then put it out. What's wrong with that? So the major news picture agencies have their own editorial guidelines. And what that means is that they will only put out pictures which they believe have not been manipulated. So we're not talking about a light touch up. We're not talking about someone's you know shading or, or the light being changed on someone's face so that you can mm. see it more readily we're talking about manipulation of images being photoshopped and this is because they want to maintain credibility as news agencies they can't be seen to be dealing or, or moving pictures around the world which haven't been authorized or have been manipulated in some way and this is to counteract the rise in ai images that we have seen from war zones mm. obviously where there can be images which have been manipulated to distort the truth. So to counteract this and to maintain credibility as, as genuine news sources, they have these editorial guidelines in place. Having reviewed the picture from Kensington Palace, they said that they couldn't guarantee that it hadn't been manipulated. I mean, e even to the, the naked eye, somebody who's not trained, you can see that it's yeah. been changed. As AP says, the pictures must always tell the truth and that it does not alter or manipulate the content of a photograph in any way. In the AP guidelines, they say the content of a photograph was, must not be altered in Photoshop or by any other means. No element should be digitally added or subtracted from any photograph. And this is the crux of it, that they're saying you, you can't do this. What's funny about this as well is that whenever Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace puts out an official photograph. We have a long list of rules which say that you can't crop or you can't change the shape of the picture. You must use it. You can't alter it in any way. You must use the image that they have provided. Mm. And it, often there's a kind of sign off sheet that all picture desks have to abide by. So as in you couldn't cut the Queen out of the picture and pop her over a graphic to make quite a nice layout in the page. It's just, here is the photo, use the photo. That's absolutely right. So you can't crop people out. Mm. I remember there was a great Father's Day image of William and he had a similar setup, actually, one of the children behind him on his shoulders and the other two, I think he had Louis on his shoulders and the other two side by side. And I went to the palace at a previous paper that I worked and said, we'd love to use this on the front of the paper tomorrow, but we want to use it in this particular shape. Mm. We'll use the, the main picture inside, the full picture with the three children, but we'd just like to use William cropped with the youngest one. And they said, no way, you can't do that. So we, we ripped up the paper and changed it so that we could have the full picture on the front. But for an organisation that's been so particular in the past about anybody altering their images or doctoring their images, I think that's what was so funny, not funny, but that was what was so extraordinary that, that they've been doing it themselves. Mm. How was this received in Kensington Palace, do we know? These news agencies saying, we've got to kill this photo because we don't trust what may have been done to it? Well, there was a, a flurry of messages on Sunday night between broadcast media, print media, and trying to get some sense out of Kensington Palace as to what their reaction to, to these messages was. It was silence. And then, well, you'll have to ask the news agencies to which the response was, we have done. And they're saying that They've been manipulated mm. by the source. The source is Kensington Palace, so he comes back round to you. And then silence until the following day, the Monday, and get the message from the Princess of Wales on her own social media channel saying that she has, it was her. 
And she altered the images herself. She says, quote, Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. What do you think of that? Well, first of all, it was William's photograph, so it seems strange that she's taking the rap for it. But presumably that's because she was the one who edited it. And it now becomes clear why it looked like such a good photograph to begin with when William is not known for taking official photographs. And it all started to make sense and that the reasons why these respected news agencies and picture agencies had so many kind of serious concerns about it because, in fact, they were right. Mm. Um, and people who had been dismissed initially on, on social media as conspiracy theories when the picture first dropped had been right too, in some respects, not in all respects. But a royal source also said, look, the princess has shared a statement on social media. This was an amateur family photograph taken by the Prince of Wales. Their royal highnesses wanted to offer an informal picture of the family together for Mother's Day. And the princess made some minor adjustments as she shared the picture on social media. Now, what those minor adjustments were, we still don't know. I mean, we can presume from having looked at the, the, the image as, we, as we've just done, but they're still not saying exactly how it happened, the process by which Kate decided to make those adjustments or why. And the spectrum of response can go from, oh, this is her, someone who we know is into photography, touching up a photo, making it look a bit better, just kind of tidying that up and just making it look really presentable. To then the other end of the spectrum is, what are they hiding? That's it. This picture, which was designed to be this kind of beacon of reassurance in this mad world of online conspiracy, only served to fuel that debate mm. and, and raise more questions than it answered, in fact, because people were then saying, well, is she really there at all? Is she still married to Prince William? Did he really take the photograph? You know, where are the children? Is she well? Is she, in fact, maybe she's in a wheelchair and she's not really in this wicker chair at all. So. Yeah. This element of, of telling the truth and relating in a kind of sensible and simple way with the public that mm. they are that they're supposed to serve, that had all been kind of shot through in a very clumsy uh, attempt at reassurance. Hasn't the palace come unstuck in this way before? Haven't we had other photos where fingers have been missing or there's been something odd about it? Or have I made that up? No, that's right. There was a picture beforehand that the that Kensington Palace released. It was a black and white picture, if you remember, around Christmas time. And it looked like one of Louis, Prince Louis' fingers was missing. Hmm. And there was such a debacle that went on and on for days about that. But in the end, Kensington Palace ignored it and, and rode that, that out. They hmm. just ignored it and brushed it off. But having knowing that in recent history there was such a kerfuffle over, you know, a possibly doctored image, that they would then put something out knowingly that had knowingly been changed, seemed naive, really. Do you think this has been an almighty PR cock-up? I think it has. I think I don't think there's any two ways about that. But I'm not, you know, what I would say is I'm not sure it's uh, his PR team who's to blame because you can have people around you, but not listen to them. Mm. And, you know, I, I think unfortunately, perhaps... It's the principal, as they call them, so the per, you know the member of the royal family who runs that particular office, mm. and this comes back down to them. And I think this is a story about William and his sense of control and his, you know, coming from a great place that he wants to protect his wife and children, but that need for control, that need to control the media, that very distinct kind of distrust of the media after what happened to his mother, that is driving a lot of his, I don't know, something about the way in which he he doesn't seem to be able to trust a lot of advisors. And now he is head of the Duchy of Cornwall. His private office is funded through that private income stream. So it's around £24 million a year. So he has the funds to go out and hire whoever he wants. He could have an amazing team around him if he wanted to. Of course, he'd then have to listen to their advice. But someone along the line has put this picture out and thought it was a good idea. Hmm. When something like this happens, I think it's really damaging and just shows, I think, well, I would say this, wouldn't I, that all the more reason to have trusted news sources and news outlets. 
But the palette, if you can't trust something that's coming from the palace and you can't believe that that's a genuine, authentic picture and that's such a pillar of British establishment, that's a problem. Mm. That's a massive PR problem. On Monday afternoon, the princess was pictured again, this time in a car with Prince William, who was being driven to the Commonwealth Day service in London. Kate wasn't going to the service. Kensington Palace said that she was going to a private appointment. There is clearly plenty more to come with this story, and you'll find every twist and turn from Kate Mansey and others at thetimes.co.uk. You've been listening to Stories of Our Times, a podcast brought to you thanks to subscribers of The Times and The Sunday Times. With me, Luke Jones, and my guest, royal editor and commentator at The Times, Kate Mansey. The producer was Branka Deladia and Olivia Case. The executive producer was Fiona Leach. And sound design was by James Shield. Stories of Our Times at thetimes.co.uk if you want to get in touch on email. And remember, next week, we're changing our name. We're being touched up and tweaked ourselves so look out for the story in your feeds i'll see you soon